Auto Central, powered by Auto Trader on CliffCentral.com. Yes, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time, that time of the week, it is time for Auto Central, proudly brought to you by AutoTrader.co.za, your trusted motoring marketplace. My name is Chad Look. I'm joined here in the studio, Vilmarie Janse van Rensburg. SA Speed Queen. Hello, Chad. Hello, Vilmarie. Uh, George Mini here Hello. to my side. Hello, Chad. How are you? Oh, very good, very good. You guys have a good week? Very good week. Hectic. Hectic. Yeah, yeah guys have been busy. We've got, uh, so I'm just going to interject there. We've got uh, two guests with us as well that we will introduce a little later on. Some very special guests. But uh, yes, first back, let's, uh, how's the weekend? How's the week been so far? I think we've had excitement all around. George, I know that you guys did your whole um, prize-winning 99-cent new car. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's exciting mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Wh- what exciting. all happened there? I'm so sorry we missed it. This was Cape Town, though. It was in Cape Town, so uh, so if you wanted to be part of it, you had to you had to be down in Cape Town. But watch the Expresso show. Look on the YouTube channel. You can uh, you can get all the all the episodes over there. I was watching on the U- on the. Uh on e- Express I Show live, and yeah. it was quite entertaining. So I it's was already on the YouTube channel. It should be. It should be. I'm yeah. not sure, but within 24 to 48 hours, it's usually up. It's n- okay. Mm. Yeah. So we have the winner in studio. We, we do. do. We have the winner in studio. <laughs> not all the way from Cape Town, but back from Cape Town. Gabriella Rod. Welcome, Gabriella. Thank you. And hello, everyone. <laughs> hello. It's so nice to see a girl with me. I'm always alone with the guys. What? What <laughs> kind? Okay, and Julia's also here, <laughs> but I mean generally. Well, you know, it's Women's Month. I had to put one in for the girls. That's awesome. Well <laughs> done. So, I mean, that's exciting stuff. Can you tell us? i, I got to know because I, I, I overheard a little bit while we were talking that um, that you had to go and take down all the specs. You needed to make sure that you can answer all the questions to make sure you win this car. So, you know enough about this car. Yes, well, like the whole campaign started from just guessing the specs every day for 28 days. So from there, like I had to learn all the specs and just know like when the questions were asked, what specs they were. And obviously the last part of the competition, I was sure that it was going to be about the car. I mean, you can't have a whole thing about studying the car to guessing the car and then not make it about the car so it was just about learning those specs and knowing it inside out and maybe going like the extra mile to find out even more about the specs to just prepare and get ready for the whole competition in a whole but so, that's awesome so tell us tell us a little bit about your story um uh, you study at the university of pretoria yes i study at the university of pretoria i'm fourth year and i'm an education student and i'm hopefully going to be doing remedial doing foundation phase and yeah i was just busy um my brothers are all turning 18 so we kind of do this thing where we like pass down the cars and stuff and my dad was like you know it's come to the time now where you can kind of try and look for a new car and we can start saving and get it and he was like look on auto trader because that's where my dad finds all his cars oh, awesome. so he's like go look there because you can compare and you can see prices and you can see what's like where we can go and stuff and and I just saw this competition and I was like uh this, this is so weird, 99 cents to buy a car. I was like, no, this is a joke. So I was just like, well, let me enter because you can't win anyway if you don't enter. Then you don't stand a chance at all. And I was like, no, let me get involved. Let me just try. Never th- never thinking that I would actually be in the final, never mind win. And I just entered and every day it was quite fun just to be involved and just to see all the questions and everyone getting involved. It was busy. Hey? It was very yeah. busy. Yeah. yeah, the people were very involved. There in was this so campaign. much activity with it. I think it's been massively successful. Just just a quick one there. Just uh, And I don't think you're going to get this one wrong. Up to how many cars can you compare online on autotrader.co.za? Four. <laughs> you got that one now. <laughs> she's keep, keeping it in the family and she's panting the no, brand. Chad, well did, Chad did that because she got the question wrong <laughs> yes, during the competition. And I'm what really nasty. was like, and four is my favorite number. I don't know what made me say five. I think it was just the pressure and I was just panicking. And I was like, I'm sure it's an odd number. It's not four. It's not four. It's not. But I should have really just guessed my favorite number and gone with my guts. But oh. So how old are you now? I'm 22. Okay. So, but I saw you drive in here with quite a big yeah, my vehicle. dad's car. It's, okay, so it's really like it's it's a matter of days, am I right, George? Yeah, so uh, uh, so we said to Gabriella that we uh, we've only got permission from the municipality to take the car down from the balcony because uh, it's at the top of Expresso Studios balcony. Um, you know, we were we were going to give her the keys and you know wish her luck with, uh, with getting, <laughs> getting the down. I <laughs> drive off there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we wouldn't do that. So uh, so the car's coming down on Sunday. The municipality will only close off the roads on Sunday to get the car down, and then um, uh, within a couple 
couple of days she should uh, she should be behind the wheel of her new car. <laughs> okay, but now I'm curious, how'd you get it up there? With a crane. So uh, so if you go onto uh, Espresso's uh, YouTube channel, you'll see the uh, the video of how we actually got the car up there. They had to close off the roads. There was this massive crane, and um, they had to put things under the wheels and lift the car uh, uh, to the top of the, the balcony. And uh, you know, my first thought was, can the balcony actually handle that car uh, being up there? But it can, and uh, it did. So and the reason for putting it up there was just to, I mean, the view is well, spectacular. Yeah, so, <laughs> where so Espresso Studios are. <laughs> <laughs> it's where the it's where the espresso studio is, and uh, you know where the presenters um, do their thing. So it was it was the best place to really, and it's a beautiful view. So it was the best place to really have the have the show happen on that balcony. But it was raining, um, and oh. uh, uh, so it fortunately stopped raining for about uh, for about a half an hour. So uh, so it all went well. Um, so how are you feeling, Gabriella? Yeah, I want to know the highlight. Yes, exactly. I mean, you must be so excited. Yeah, to, it's still like hasn't really sunk in completely. But yeah, it's unbelievable. Like I really, I'm, I'm still in shock to be honest. And I think it will all sink in eventually. Like when I take that first drive or whatever the case is. Does it but still seem a little surreal? Yeah, I was as like, if it hasn't ex- yeah, exactly happened. Yeah, I was happened. like still woke up yesterday and I was like, okay, when is this on? Like when are we going? And I was like, wait, hold on. It's all, it's all. It's all sinking in like this morning. Oh, it's so weird. And uh, and and tell us about your competition, Carabo. So the, you guys uh, uh, you guys met each other for the first time uh, yesterday. Yeah, we okay. met each other for the first time. Well, at the airport when we landed yes. on Monday. And yeah, and since then actually we just like kind of clicked and we just got along so well and it was so weird that we had so much in common. And he's actually such a great guy. Like he really is. And I. And, like, I was actually in the position where I was like, you know what, whoever wins, it's like I'm going to be happy for the person because it's just, he's such a good guy. Like, I would ne- And I'm so happy that he did walk away with a prize as well. And so what did he get? He got 20,000 rand. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, hello. Yeah, so we, we, we kind yeah. of kept it away from him until the, the moment of truth so we could get the real expression. And uh, we gave him 20,000 rand as the runner-up uh, uh, during the show. Uh, and that, it was that expression that sort of sold yes. me on it. It was great. It was just that sheer look of, I wasn't expecting anything. Yes. And now all of a sudden, yeah. wow, this actually, this ch- I'm, so a, I'm a, a winner, nevertheless. On a, on yes, a mass absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so I spoke to Carabo about uh, what he's going to do with the money uh, after this, after we had the, the, the show and it completed. And uh, he said, no, nope, he's going to put it in the bank and he's going to think about it for a while. So uh, so he's graduating, um, I think, at the end of this year. Yeah. Um, he's graduating graduating at the end of the year and he's going he's gonna to think about what he's going to do with the money. So uh, so it's good on him. Karate yeah, did. and his dad also said to him, spend it wisely. So he's taking a lot of, he said, yeah. he's going to ask his dad, dad, what does it mean to spend this wisely? Yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You say, you, you, you currently, what, what car do you drive? I currently drive a really old city golf. Uh-huh. And yeah. what are you going to do with your old city golf? I'm going to pass it down to my brother. <laughs> okay. okay, so there was a, there was another winner in your family. He's turning 18 yeah. now, you see. Well, yeah, I, well, he turned 18 in March, uh-huh. and my other brother is 19. So, yeah, now they, they can, can share it. Yeah. Oh, they're going to share Oh, shame. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. That nev- I, that I don't want to share my wheels. <laughs> well, well, they do everything cars. together, so works. they... Oh, so, okay. So, it won't be too bad. So, are you, are you going to let anybody drive your Mazda? Mm, no, I'm joking. I definitely will. No. I think no, my no. dad. I have to let my dad. No. <laughs> He's the person who got me. Yeah. <laughs> you can, as a passenger, no problem. But do not <laughs> give him the keys. Don't give anyone the keys. That's yours. Well, my dad taught me how to drive, so I'm kind of okay. going. Okay, if he, I can drive now, he can drive too. <laughs> you sort of feel obliged. To yeah. Sp- <laughs> uh, okay, Dad. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't share wheel, girl. Those are yours. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about the car, because you know enough now, spec-wise, color-wise. Tell the listener what it is that you're walking away with. Well, from the 28 Clues, it's a hatchback. It's soul red. It's got the, as um, Angie said yesterday on the Express Show, it's got the three S's. So it's got speed. It goes from 0 to 100 kilometers in 8.7 seconds. It's got um, safety. It's got two airbags, and it's got central keyless locking. As well as it's just got soul. It's just beautiful. The interior's got red line stitching, and it's just it's unbelievable. It really is an amazing car. Five, it's got five doors and five seats, and you know that's that's perfect for me being a teacher and like an au pair. So 
just I really amazing. Teacher. All right, thanks, guys. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm out of a job. What? <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's got it waxed. She really does. You've got it waxed. You know, all the stats, all the figures. I'm going to be out of a job here soon. Actually, yes. Maybe she should do a review with you or something. Uh, On the uh, two, yeah. <laughs> so you say you're uh, you're also an au pair besides being, uh, being a teacher. Okay. Yes, I am. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, I, I, I really love kids and I really love helping kids as well. And the family that I work for now, they're just amazing. They're really good to me. And the kids are so much fun. A little bit naughty and sometimes it can be a bit How stressful. The, um, Raul is 10, Adriano is 8, and the little Daniela is 4. Okay. So, so yeah. you know, it helps to be to do good work. You know, it pays off. Yeah. Working away with <laughs> really over two hundred thousand rands worth of car. I mean, the one I actually want. Oh, I'm I, I'm really sorry. No, no, you okay. can come for a ride though. Thank you. <laughs> Don't give me the keys. Keep the keys. <laughs> well, Marie, I'll see one in your future too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days. Well, Gabriella, it's, it's really awesome um, to have you on the show. And uh, congrats from from everyone. Thanks for joining us. It was very short notice, but we couldn't let this one go. Well, well, I'm so happy to be here as well. It's so it's, I'm sure it's starting to feel a little more official now. Yeah, even no, though definitely. Being here I'm as like, well. okay, hold on. I'm on radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I think... Um, well, I definitely want a photo when she gets the car, and I think we should we should get a oh, little I, bit of a. I think we, yeah, I think we should do that. Do That's a good idea. Yes, that. no, yes. we need to we need to get you in and make you part of the family. You are now officially one of the what yeah, one part of, of the family. So yes. uh, we get you in and we'll get the photos and uh, brandy the car and your face all over. Yeah, and I'll definitely tweet as well a lot and Instagram and everything. <laughs> well, it's an it's an awesome. Um, Studio home. I mean, we jam packed today. We have a wonderful guest, Gabriella. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to butt in wherever you'd like <laughs> as we go along because we're actually talking about stuff very relevant to what you'll be driving now as well. Um, but we've got a wonderful guest with us, Wayne. Is it Doran or Duran? And I mean, I've known Duran. you for years. Hey, um, yeah, yeah, a number of years. <laughs> yes. And I still, I've never actually asked you, do I pronounce it Duran? I gave up trying to get people to pronounce my name correctly. Uh, Probably after two years of racing, because every different commentator has his take on it. So uh, they it, whatever. Put their own Guilty as charged. Yes. Guilty as charged. <laughs> well, we go we go with visual, um, the way that it appears there. And if we have sort of met the person and not necessarily gotten to the point of how do we pronounce your surname, it's going to go on. Okay, sort of. Uh, what's I your think. ethnicity background? <laughs> you know, Spanish descent, British descent, German descent, and, and you try and put the inflections on as is needed. So we're trying to judge it even before Wayne tells us how to pronounce it. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I've given up. It makes no difference. <laughs> Made no difference over the last 50 odd years. So will make absolutely zero now. Well, Wayne, but I mean, what you've done over the years is you have made a difference. And for now, for us, well, for me, I mean, I've known you a long time, yet we've never actually heard your story. And also, just to tell the listener that you, I mean, you're part of uh, Pirelli South Africa. Am I right? Correct. And uh, specifically more on the bike side, though, but you've been in this industry, in the motor industry now, for how many years? Without giving your age away, but uh, you listen, I'm an old bullet. But uh, <laughs> good God, motorcycle industry started in about hell, ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. Yeah, so that's a long time ago. It's a decent a very years, long time yes. ago. <laughs> but I mean, you've been involved in racing yourself. Were you involved in a GP as well? You competed in the. I did. I was one of the the two suckers that. Uh, <laughs> took all our um, savings and, and, and life earnings and whatever we had as worldly possessions, gave that up. And uh, we were the first South Africans back in Grand Prix racing, motorcycle Grand Prix racing, after the uh, the ban on South Africans or the embargo on South Africans was lift, uh, lifted. So it was... Uh, so who was the other one with you? Uh, Russell Wood and myself oh, went over. And uh, very naive and... Probably financially the worst mistake we'd ever made. Uh, but, hell, you know, there, there's certainly stories and experiences money can't buy. Mm. But um, uh, career-wise, a, a daft move. Oh, really? <laughs> Why would you say that? Uh, just financially. I mean, you, you give up everything to go over there and you have these dreams and aspirations. And uh, you don't realize that being at the top of your game here... You know, things are quite easy and uh, people are willing to sponsor you. When you arrive in Europe, 
there are another 5,000 guys just like mm-hmm. you, just as good, just as desperate. But they have the safety of going back home after each race. Uh, in those days, we couldn't come home. We, we we left here, and that was it. We lived in the back of uh, trucks, in uh, workshops, and, uh, you know, lived on all brand flakes and water for months and did what we had to do. But um, it was interesting. So you would most definitely a motorsport uh, well, you, you're part of the family. You have been. You know what you're talking about when we talk about tires or the industry as a whole. I know you've. A lot of people would disagree with you there. <laughs> no, I know you well enough to know. But I mean, specifically, what I found interesting is we we went quite a bit into the Pirelli, um, uh, not just Pirelli South Africa, but as a whole. I, I think it's amazing the the innovativeness in terms of how they handle the brand and. Um, for example, I mean, there's so many categories uh, in terms of the the company itself, the motorsport, the trucking, um, the bike side, which you handle as well. It's it's a huge company. I mean, yeah. it's a multinational, uh, one of the top five big tire companies in the world, and it was essentially started in 1870 odd, uh, a family-owned business, uh, pretty much DNA of of very much racing. And if you look still today, we are involved in World Rally Championships, Formula One, exciting at times, and uh, not everyone likes us there at the moment. And then World Superbikes is a big part of our makeup, as well as motocross. Mm -hmm. So we we cover a very broad spectrum. But what's interesting as well, on your site, uh, um, the South African website, I saw that you can, if you have a bike or a car, you can actually go put in the car, the model, and it, it... gives you the preferred tire for that vehicle yeah, obviously it's biased to our tires that fit those vehicles course, which is uh, I mean, go. all good and well but yeah it's um i think in terms of electronics and uh digital media we we pretty good worldwide although you know in a big company like this it, it is limited to a certain degree um especially when it comes to people making comments about product or uh, fitment or specification so you know they're legal issues which uh, we don't really have in our market but uh, we do sell quite a lot in the states and uh, we're aware of the the litigation issues there so we we have to mind our p's and q's quite often and that's where we limit ourselves in terms of uh, social media and that kind of thing where i believe we should be a lot more active but what kind of legal uh, I mean, things can. What is this from the public? Is this from competitors? Look, it's public liability uh, in essence. So, if you do have any any kind of issue with any product, or even whether it's a correct application or not, it can lead to to issues. So, you know, our guys are very aware of that, and uh, just make sure that you don't have someone who's not qualified to make any kind of public statement. Mm. Uh, able to do it or give them a platform to do it put it that way so is Pirelli is Pirelli South Africa uh, a separate uh, uh, licensed um, distributor or is it all part of a global business no we we wholly own subsidiary of Pirelli uh, worldwide Pirelli Tire or Pirelli Italy okay so you know if you look at the company I think we're in about 25 different countries worldwide direct as direct organization we do have in certain markets agencies or distributors, but here we we are owned wholly owned subsidiary of Pirelli Italy. Okay, and your uh, your outlets are uh, are the traditional tie fitment centres. Yes and no. Yes, yes in terms of volume based, but obviously we have a, a very strong involvement on the premium segment of the market with companies like Mercedes Benz. Uh, Porsche, BMW, Ferrari, McLaren, mm. uh, Lamborghini, Bentley. So all all the really good and premium or prestige brands in in terms of motor uh, motor car, are we directly involved with. I'm pretty sure that Gabriella is going to tell you that her Mazda 2 is premium car. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue that. <laughs> so 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 a large. Um, portion of your business is actually putting tires on uh, assembled cars. Correct. So we would have relationships with factories, whether it's truck, motorcycle, car, where we supply original equipment. Obviously, there's a, a marketing aspect to that, that in terms of refitment, many people will just carry on replacing what is fitted on the cars originally. 
But and how much of that happens? I mean, how, how do you experience that uh, that switching? Do people generally stick to the tie that comes from the from the factory? Very dependent on on the person themselves and the kind of car they're driving. So you will find uh, replacement of original equipment is a lot higher in the premium segment. And when I say premium segment, it's uh, your more expensive brands and things that come out with uh, wheels of 60 or 17, 18, 19 inch and above. Okay. okay. And isn't it also, I mean, this you often see tire specials running in that as well. And I, I'm sure a lot of people go based on that as well when it's time to change. Look, the tire, the, 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 the passenger car tire industry is, is uh, a really tough and cutthroat business. And uh, we're a small player in the market. We are probably 4 to 5% of the passenger market. Um, but in order to move rubber, which is what our game is, uh, you need to do these things. And uh, with the tire retailers and outlets, they run on specials. That is that is what motivates mm-hmm. purchases or it does. promotes and, and sells your brand. Marketing, marketing, marketing. We were talking about that earlier. Correct. <laughs> which you also have some background on. But I'm curious then, if, if it's such a small percentage, which I didn't know in terms of the, the car side, the bike side, surely that's quite a bit bigger. We are a lot bigger. And strangely enough, um, on the motorcycle side, it's it's easier for us in this, this particular market and, for example, Germany or, or Central Europe to sell premium priced product and premium brand because you're dealing really with a leisure market. We don't have a big uh, contingency of, of commuting market here. So you will find that motorcycle owners here, that's their passion. That's their weekend love and de-stressing. So it's easier for them to justify spending a little bit more money on a good product than it is to just replace with whatever is affordable. But I'm sure that on a bike, the mindset, I know my mindset's different. Because, I mean, you have only those two wheels keeping you basically on the tar. Correct. And, that and does help so, us. So it helps you, it motivates you to spend a bit more if there's the traction aspect, the safety aspect, all of that that comes with it. Surely that's the important part, the it selling is, point. It yeah. is very true. But, um, you know, in, in different categories or, or different usages or, or applications on, on motorcycles, um, you know, it's sometimes hard to justify a 25 or 30% difference in pricing mm. for slightly better grip or a lot more grip. Not everyone is uh, a motorcycle racer. So the guys that have a bit of a competitive edge, yes, will purchase on, on purely on performance. Mm. But there's certainly a mileage aspect. So in terms of your longevity of a tire, your safety issue is big. So in terms of wet weather performance, mm. And then something which uh, us as Africans couldn't give two hoots about, but uh, is a big player in terms of uh, Europe, is the noise and, uh, you know, so noise pollution, that kind of thing. And wet weather here, no one really cares because they're not going to go ride in the rain. You know, we're we blessed with good weather. We are. I mean, it's even it's even played a role in terms of with the racing guys I know over the years when they have to go overseas and compete in the rain there it's it's a challenge for the guys because we do not have that amount of correct wet and and most guys would rather not ride in miserable conditions yeah. we you know we fair weather riders social yeah, yeah we're, i mean we're a lot of the european countries the, the motorcycle will be the primary source of transportation we're sitting correct. here it's only a secondary form of transportation yeah, virtually is. each and every bike rider here has a vehicle has a car has a tin top that he can go back and fall onto when the weather's inclement when it's a little cold a something of the top. sort yeah, yep. cage. That's it. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm with Chad on that. <laughs> we well, understand the term. <laughs> we, we understand it. But so it, it's it's largely recreational in that sense, the, the purchases and that. And no doubt that the tyre selection process is something that is also very personal to their riding style uh, and what they're looking for. Sounds to me like the choice of tyres is just uh, what someone likes. Uh, yes and no. There's, you know, there's a there's a lot of development and and uh, engineering involved in tires, and um, I think the things that we've got right in terms of the performance of our product is is largely due to our involvement in in the many different facets of racing. Mm. So that feeds back into our road side, but we don't only focus on that. Um, if if you look at what we've achieved in terms of high mileage product. We have, at the moment, probably two of the best products in terms of really, really good mileage combined with the grip that we've 
managed to drag out of tyres from the racing as- aspect of it. Because you always, like anything, um, compromise something. The moment exactly. you get the other one better, something else is going to be compromised. And I mean, I see on the website as well the tests that you guys do. Uh, I mean, there's braking tests, there's um, what's it, wet weather tests, there's f- uh, fuel saving tests. So it's very interesting. I know it's a little more on the car truck side. No, on, but on uh, motorcycles specifically, we have a test crew based in Jara in Sicily of 38 people that their function every single day, day in, day out, is to test motorcycle tires. And, you know, it's not all going around a racetrack. They test and develop and they test competitive products as well to to relate to that and to see how and where we fit in. But their job is to test, purely to test motorcycle tires. So they ride, God alone knows the, the, the amount of mileage they do, but they ride all day long. That's on various different things, various different conditions. So what kind of feedback um, can they give us? I mean, is it that, what is your goal with them doing that? Well, it's to, to check performance firstly, and then also mileage, uh, how they hold up, um, you know, the degradation. Because the big thing about a tire is, is not to produce something that works perfectly for the first 50 kilometers of its life and then changes dramatically. Mm. So the thing that we've gotten right over the last couple of years is to produce a tire that performs the same from outset as brand new right up until the end of its life, which is something that uh, in motorcycle terms uh, you will have found years ago, you know, guys talk about a tire going off for the tire life. It's got nothing to do with the mileage on it, but it, it runs out of grip or performance. And heat cycles? Heat cycles also play a, a role in that, but that's more specific to racing. To racing yes. uh, whereas on the road, you know, your, your heat cycle is only when you're using it. It builds up heat very quickly as, mm. as soon as you're using it. And as soon as you stop, that's gone. So it's that it keeps that performance and that maintains the kind of performance every time you use it. So that it's basically got a longer lifespan. Correct. But it's also then surely how you look after it, which which is something I want to get back to just now. We're just going to go to an ad break quickly. And when we get back, talk a little bit more about Pirelli and the bike of the year. Choice. Sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't. AutoTrader gives you the choice. Now you can shop, compare and buy new cars. Watch our expert video reviews and research before you buy. AutoTrader New Car. The choice is yours. Auto Central, powered by AutoTrader on cliffcentral.com. Yes, welcome back. We're sitting here and we're chatting to Wayne Doran. And we've got Gabby Duran. Duran. I'm just sorry. saying. <laughs> right, Isn't there a band called Duran Duran? Where are they now? Yeah. Con- spelled completely <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> spelled completely different. Exactly. But is it pronounced the same? Exactly. We right. still haven't gotten to that because you never told us, actually. It's Duran. That's it. Cool. Duran. Got okay. it. Oh, okay. Same so points Duran. for me. Okay. Do I get some tired? No. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Nice try. And, of course, we've got Gabrielle in studio here as well. Uh, winner of the 99 cent new car campaign. Uh, Bulmer, you were chatting... Uh, to uh, to Wayne now about yes. uh, you know Pirelli's involvement in in the market uh, their market share their marketplace mm-hmm. of the testing and that that's done but you guys are also involved with bike of the year correct I was hoping you were going to mention the calendar because that's quite I, famous I've got too it on here but you know <laughs> you got the calendar on there I mean not on uh, uh, down here uh, 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 <laughs> reverse reverse uh, I actually it's went a gentleman's and calendar it. that no bike well, of ladies the ladies are in it. It's so, a brilliant so calendar. Really beautiful ladies. And there's some guys for the girls. So yeah. it's, uh, you I know, we're getting... Well, well, while we're actually on that, it is one of those things that has... We've almost gone away forced, from bikes. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> it has almost forced Pirelli into almost a, a fashion and and glamour sort of direction and made them almost synonymous with that fashion industry. Well, well, it is. It's something that started basically in the 70s, if I, if I remember correctly, mm. in, uh, in the UK market and started really in London. With him introducing, and it it was kind of a a sexist male dominated industry in those days, that they brought out this very sexy calendar of uh, beautiful ladies, uh, but they took it to another level, and in, in instead of it being smutty, they've taken it to a very sexy and uh, classy level, mm. and it's it's something that's now become synonymous with a brand. Yeah. Now what that's done for us is that. You know, it's very boring. Look, 
to be honest, tires, tires are tires, round black things. They're not exactly the most beautiful exactly. things to look at. No. And yes, they perform well and we need them and they look after us in terms of safety and performance. But largely like a grudge purchase as exactly. a whole. Exactly. It's not the kind of thing you want to display and go and... I wouldn't leave home to go and look at a tire. <laughs> well, well, it's curvy. Uh, yes. You know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in terms of that, I think what the calendar has done for us is given us something to talk about away from tires. The, the synergy is there, but we're a tire company that you can discuss outside of just rubber. Yes. So we have a, a sexy a... kind of product that, that we become synonymous with. And then we have, which is probably not that well known here, we have the P0 fashion range. Now, the P0 fashion range uh, is not affordable to most people because it's in the in the realms of Dolce Gabbana and uh, oh. that, you know, that sort of ilk. But it's, it's a very sexy, beautiful, high-end fashion range. And so that's something else that, you know... But we don't have that here. We, is that what you're saying? There, there are certain outlets, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Sandton City. Must be because that's our, our decent shopping is mall around here. But yeah, there are there are a thing couple that of people. Sort of we get by a GP store. GP yeah. store. I mean, they cater with all the mm. uh, McLaren, the Aston Martin, the Ferrari yes, sort of merchandise. Yes. I would expect to find it there. Uh, you, you may. I, I must be honest. I'm not that au fait with it. Fashion so. conscious. Oh, I have a pair of shoes, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, I think it lends a very sort of personalised hum, human aspect to the brand. Like you say, it just shows that there's more to tyres, and you know this is actually a, a company run by humans, you know, and but, uh, I mean, and guys have, and enthusiastic about all things, almost blokey in a sense. Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, you got. I was saying earlier how innovative per- Pirelli has been, and like you're saying, their marketing strategies have been very interesting. 2006, they did. They called like a Pirelli. They've got a Pirelli Heroes campaign going with where they link up with um, a lot of females as well, but also male. Um, Correct. We we look. We've we've been involved with a lot of uh, sports stars with yes. female uh, movie and and fashion celebrities. Like uh, Uma Thurman. Uma one? Thurman was was certainly one. Um, Got Naomi Campbell. Uh, Naomi Campbell was uh, featured. Michael Jordan, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and and in, and we've got Ronaldo for the ladies. Yes, uh, he did a very famous pose that they used, which was based on the statue or, or the the Christ the Redeemer in in Brazil. Magic uh, feet or something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Now you know we also. Funnily enough, uh, not funnily enough, I guess Milan is our, our hometown. Uh, we are the uh, the major sponsor of the Inter Milan football team. They okay. could do a little better for us, but <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> Different kind of show that comes on after this one. Exactly. Yes. And then, um, you know, we, uh, yeah, so sport, sports-wise, we, we're quite involved. And then what was the other thing? Oh, on the, on the art side. A very big setup that we get involved with worldwide, and we have been involved here before. Uh, in terms of the uh, FNB Arts Expo, we've we've over the past eight or nine years sponsored artists, uh, you know, up and coming artists to develop their their work and mm. display at the FNB Art Fair. We weren't involved this year, and I, it, it's something that has changed slightly locally. But internationally, we, we're still very much involved in the art world. So, I mean, Pirelli can't relate with art directly, but yet that is how you guys are being different. Um, yeah. It's, it's something else to, you know, for the company to to show off their, their brand, but also to get people that would never consider what the hell a tire is and the necessity of it, mm. but they all use them. So, you know, it's it's an association Mm. which sets us apart from other producers. So now we were talking earlier, Wayne, about um, Pirelli Bike of the Year. Chad, we started on that. Now, I was mm. actually at the at the prize giving. Do you, did it was I, a week ago, wasn't it? You yes. ran from here almost actually, straight Wednesday, through there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Wednesday, a week ago. Um, now, a week before that, Chad and I were – George, I think you went away. You had mm. to go do some serious business. And we were discussing the car side of the selection process. Yeah, the selection process the and, and how uh, 
and the sort of the judging process as well and how the points are calculated, what goes into deciding yeah. on who makes car of the year. And and we had one of the guys of the guild here that explained how technical it was. Now, I know the bike industry also, so it's slightly different. It's a little more relaxed. Um, a lot more a relaxed. A lot more relaxed. I'm However, trying to be. <laughs> mm. Look, yeah. I think... Also a discussion we were having earlier. Correct. Look, the, 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 the biking community is, by and large, a hell of a lot more relaxed. Uh, in terms of how they portray themselves, I would say if you look at the, prof- uh, the, the presentation of dealerships, the car industry is maybe 10 years ahead of us in terms of the level that they operate at, you know, the likes of the, the, the flagship stores. Uh, motorcycling, maybe 10 years behind. but That much? Uh, pretty much. we half a step ahead of the bicycle industry. But that's my personal opinion. Okay. Which is also I rapidly would, growing. I would probably <laughs> get lynched for that. But that aside, it's, it's, <laughs> you can see on the... On, um, you know, motorcycle stores are generally run by guys that have grown up in the industry. Mm. They will grow up as a an ex rider, a mechanic, or whatever in the in the industry, and eventually open up a dealership. It is changing. BMW is certainly setting the bar in that standard. Mm. Um, so it is changing over time. But uh, yeah, ten years is about it. You know, the 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 things that they lack at a schooling or education, really formal education in terms of business acumen. Uh, but it is coming, and which is a good thing. Now, relating that to Bike of the Year, mm. Bike of the Year was a concept that started about four and a half years ago. It was a uh, myself and Matt Durrans from The Bike Show sat down and uh, after a, a large beer. amount of alcohol inspiration... We came up with the idea of running a bike of the year set up and decided to punt it. And going from year one was basically getting a bunch of journalists and a bunch of bikes together and running the setup. And then I think most people would have run for the hills after the first one. But it was our mission to set up something that could emulate what we do in the in the car industry and, and give it some credibility. And I think we've gotten there in terms of the representation mm. from the press, uh, we, we've got a fairly wide representation in terms of media on the on the Bike of the Year panel. Uh, we've got buy-in from all the, the, the formal importation and manufacturing mm. section in, in terms of motorcycles, which is great. Um, when it comes to the judging criteria, it was something that also year one was, okay, guys, how do you feel? What, what do you like? So and it was very personal. It was very personal. Yes. However, this year we we have decided, or we had decided, it's now done and dusted, but to make it a lot more structured. So there is a very specific bunch of criteria that they measure each bike on. However, you have to you have to put it into context because motorcycling is a passion game. It's a passion industry. It's it's we do it because we love it. So. The weighting in terms of would you buy the motorcycle or would I own this particular motorcycle is one of the categories. You know, it's, it's really the wow factor of the bike. Mm. And that can be something different to each different person that rides it. Depends what their likes are. Depends on on all sorts. It may not only be the aesthetics or the power or whatever it is, but it's, it's does this motorcycle talk to me? Mm. But how many journalists do you have? Uh, I mean, this one now, you guys went to Null Spray? I think we had 15 journos on this. It was done down in, in the old Eastern Transvaal, so Hraskop, Hazy View area, which is uh, divine. Oh, of course. <laughs> it is lovely place to ride. Uh, roads are good, and there's uh, traffic is, is not too bad. You do have the odd logging truck, which poses a little bit of an exciting a moment challenge. or two. <laughs> that challenge. That's isn't that one of our favourite words. <laughs> we don't have problems. It was challenging. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you know, in terms of that, I think it's it's, and again, that panel will probably grow to seventeen or twenty next year as as we expand it. And uh, the mission is to to start involving more journos from up north on the continent. Well, Chad will be joining soon, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see if I'm on the panel about this time next year. But oh, uh, that's easy. <laughs> I, I know it's easy now. It's who you know 
on the <laughs> I will be left for dead. You told me what happens at these launches and how it's just, yeah, look, you know, you've got your leader who is one of the instructors and he's just gone. And you said no, they're keeping the sweeper up. That's kind of where it is, is uh, it developed yes. to a more sensible level. Yes, yeah. In that mm. uh, if you look at the journalists that were on this, they represent all the major motoring media in the country. And, um, you know, it's easy to get a bunch of uh, young racing guys to go test the bikes, but that's not realistic because they're good at racing and not good at telling the story of the motorcycle mm. or looking at it from various different angles and criteria that, that you look at. And not yeah. necessarily a commuter in the sense that they, they're spending, you know, peak hour traffic times on a bike and having to exactly. actually live with it, you know. Exactly. So, you know, it it was actually quite amusing this year because for whatever reason, it was very much biased towards all the new superbikes. Mm. So it does give the whole feel a little bit of a spin, but, you know, the guys that are there don't only look at it from that perspective. We don't only look at performance. Performance is one small part of it. Uh, value for money is a, is a very big part of that. Uh, you know, the performance, the braking, the the aesthetics, the how it does in its own category. Because uh, many people have kind of said, how can you have a dual purpose bike up against a super bike? It's very simple yeah. because, you know, they... Again, they perform in their, in their own, own categories. categories. Yes. It, it, it's like Same we were discussing the with the cars. You know, yes. they're in their own categories, and if they are there and they've made the final, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Wayne, if they've made it to those finalists, they are essentially the best of their category. They fought off another eight to ten different contenders, four or five 100%. different contenders perhaps mm. in the bikes, and they have made it there. Now they are all being judged almost individually and given their merits yes, overall, each, but yeah. not being compared to each other. Well, I mean, Correct. I mean, people are. They, I'm quite happy with with the winner. I'm very happy, which is the Kawasaki, the H2. But a lot of people says it doesn't tick all the boxes, you know. So it's a bike that actually has its own category and almost no challenge. If I'm well, correct in that, I sense. think if if you have a look, firstly go back a step and and you have a look at the bikes that were entered into this, and really how it works in a nutshell is anything that is since the the previous edition of Bike of the Year. Any new product that was launched into our market in the current year up to when this thing starts is open to be entered. Mm. Um, so there were probably around about 30 to 35 motorcycles entered into it. And then the guys vote for the journalists vote for their top 16. And so out of that, that, you get yeah. the, you know, so each of the, the journalists ones, on the yeah. on the panel would vote for who they would put their top 16. And that is is then calculated as to the, the, the top 16 of each journalist. And that's how they select the top bikes. So you would have noticed some key motorcycles missing. But it's it's what they selected as the bikes to go through for mm. the top 16. So which ones did go through? Because I can't remember all of them. Oh, I'll try help. Just put me I'm on the spot. <laughs> uh, the, the oddities we'll start with first is the zero electric motorcycle, which was quite interesting. And put in there as, as something quite new to the, the industry, quite mm. innovative. Mm. Uh, not everyone's cup of tea, but, you know, in, in terms of where it is, I think the future, we could we could wind up there sooner than we think. Okay. Then we had two cruisers in terms of the Harley-Davidson 750, which uh, the model name escapes me. And uh, then the, the Indian Scout. Which, which a lot of people actually like. It's a stunning looking motorcycle. And if you look at the build quality and the performance mm. on it, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, then we had the Naked well, Bikes, which was a Suzuki S1000 or GSXR1000. There we go. Pulled up, pulled and, up a bit of a ah, list. There up we the, go. The, the list makes it slightly easier. Yeah. And then we had the, the BMW R90, okay. which was a lot of fun to ride. But... Uh, you know, again, based it's it's a uh, design based on the old boxer engine. Mm. Uh, then uh, and they couldn't enter the new um, uh, XR, unfortunately. No, the it XR arrived by that slightly. Time, yeah. it, it was only released into the market uh, just shortly after, after they, the date. Yeah, yeah three weeks it's ago. So it's, it will be in next year's yeah, one because mm. they didn't win. BM didn't win anything this year, but I think they stand a very well, good chance. You know, BMW, to be honest, is uh, really. In terms of network, in terms of product, in terms of what they do in the market, is is pretty much the benchmark mm. of what happens here. Mm. Uh, so they generally, you have to accept that they will always have a bike in there because 
they're going to produce something that is, is quality is enough to be there 100%. and good enough. And um, I think they may have gone home feeling a little slighted in terms of uh, their S1000RR not winning. But, um, yeah, it was up up against I some think, very I think the stiff competition. I think yeah. the competition has caught up. BMW largely set the bar a couple of years ago when they released the first incarnation of the S1000. And... They've just painted a target on their backs that everybody is now just aiming for. Look, I think Kawasaki did well. I am I'm biased, but I'm not. You know, in this case, for me, it Look, is I what think it is. Why Why did it win? My personal opinion, and again, you know, I I was not there as a judge. Uh, I'm there as as representing the sponsor. But in terms of the motorcycle they put out, they they developed a motorcycle in its own category. Yes, it's a super bike, but my goodness, that thing produces. A stupid amount of horsepower, 200 horsepower. It weighs slightly more than the the top superbikes. It is an incredibly stable and easy to ride chassis, uh, and it's it's supercharged. So from any RPM in any gear, anything supercharged is cool. It's ridiculous. Do you want to give us the rest of the list, Chad? Oh, you want to go with the list? Yeah, quickly? just quickly know who the entrance. Just quickly before we go over to my review there. Well, um, from the top, with the, taking the top was the Ninja H2, was the Kawasaki Ninja H2. The Yamaha R1 was in there as well. The S1000RR, of course, that we mentioned. The RSV1000, Aprilia. Mm. So, I mean, glad to see that they're still uh, featuring in these lists. A surprise package in that. It was a very nice handling motorcycle. 1299 Panigale from Ducati, as well as the Multistrada from Ducati. Uh, KTM 1290 Super Adventure. Also, a bit of a left-field choice. We were talking about this one earlier, which is a Triumph Tiger, the 800 XCX. Second place. Second place mm. and yeah, uh, very close to taking it overall, yeah. which, you know, people would look at and say, hmm, 800 winning bike of the year. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a surprisingly good package, a wonderful, uh, easy motorcycle mm. to ride, good, to, good on the eye, and it handles superbly. Yeah. And we also had the Aprilia Capinwood Rally there, uh, as well as the Ducati Scrambler, which is a nice, interesting mm. bike as well. The Indian Scout that you mentioned before. Uh, seems a bit split on that one, actually. Some like it, some don't. I think, you know, it's it's one of those. You either like cruisers or you hate them. Um, I'm of the age group now we are, where I love them. <laughs> I, I want one. And that is a really pretty motorcycle. Well, I mean, up against the uh, Street 750 Harley-Davidson as well. Hey, Almost not quite head-to-head, but... Uh, it's the Harley it on their to me was a, you know, I know that was their new bike, but it was, it's not in the league of the Scout. It's it wasn't exciting to ride. Wouldn't be my first choice. Came across a little dated, yeah. Well, we had the BMW R9 T there, the Yamaha Tracer, uh, the Suzuki GSX 1000 F, and then of course that Zero uh, S, which is an all-electric bike, which was uh, the left yep. field Greenpeace approach. Bunny hugging, yeah. save the tree sort of maneuver. Just before we go to the review, Chad, um, yeah. who was third? Was it Yamaha? Yamaha R1. Mm. Now, if, if you yeah. look at that in terms of uh, superbikes, probably the most exciting package that's happened mm. in, in terms of superbikes. An amazing motorcycle mm. to ride. And coming from a racing background, I stole a few laps at the press launch in Cape Town. And my God, what a motorcycle Can you still to ride. ride, Wayne? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wayne, thanks very much. Uh, well, just before we, we start wrapping things up, I'm just going to touch on our review, our highlighted review for the week, and that is, of course, the 3.2 litre, the Mazda BT-50. Mazda. BT mm. So there we go. We're Do you back like with your Mazda? Yes. Oh, Mazda for the win. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is the 4x2 version, the double cab SLE, and uh, it's... It's not a new vehicle per se, so you may be asking, why am I testing it? It's because they've actually just recently launched, and if you've been watching the TV, that you would have noticed the Drifter Pack that they're offering. All of a sudden now it's got these fancy little add-ons and that, and it's actually quite a clever marketing ploy by Mazda. Now, the BT-50 as a whole, very good double cab. Um, I love, once again, you know me, I, I love interiors. Mm. This is a double cab with the interior like a sedan. It could be a sedan or an SUV. It doesn't have that archaic, agricultural, overly plastic approach that hose me down after a day in the bush sort of approach. It <laughs> actually feels and drives like a car. Granted, when you get to a couple of the controls like the gearbox and that being a little notchy, the diesel motor uh, and just the gearing of it as well, still comes across as a as, as a bucky, as a, as a 4x4, 4x2 lifted body LDV, but it drives surprisingly well and the feel of everything is so easy to live with. But that, that marketing ploy is the, the drifter pack. Now, what Mazda is saying is that the 
the one that I was testing, costs 402,400. Mm. So that's now your SLE, your 4x2, in the double cab. But if you go with the Drifter pack, they're going to throw in 35,000 rands worth of accessories on the house. And that includes black mm. nudge bars up front, black roll bar at the back, running skirts, there's mats inside, 17-inch black Rhino wheels, and then a little shock absorber that goes on the tailgates. And that may sound a little gimmicky, but it makes it open like a car's boot. So you can just unlatch it, mm. and it eases itself down into position. Actually, very good. Instead of this bong, 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 slam down sort of effect that you usually get from your uh, from your tailgates. But you can choose that, or you can take roughly 20,000 Rand off the purchase price. It almost looks like, uh, like it has car lights. Uh, on the front no. and back. Yes, yes, that's the thing. That is the, the big bone of contention here is the fact that not many people like the Mazda BT-50 styling. I do because I think it's a little unconventional. Mm. Your hardcore double cab owner, buyer, purchaser, the consumer there is looking for something butch and squared off, uh, straight lines, and the BT-50 comes in very rounded. Mm. The front end is good. It's the back end that gets most people. And yes, the back tail lights maybe could do with an update. Uh, very trapezoidal in their approach. Uh, wrap round 3D sort of effect. Not the sort of thing that we're accustomed to seeing. We're accustomed to seeing these slab-like, mm. chocolate-like blocks on the back of a of a bucky. And uh, the, the BT-50 doesn't have that. Accessories is an extra like that. You never get your money back for that. So to get that as a freebie, I think is brilliant. Well, it depends on what accessory it is. I mean, uh, things like... Uh, um, uh, navigation, sunroofs, those sorts of add-ons to a car do get your money back. Those can, yeah. These um, are more cosmetic now, yeah. George. Cosmetic. So these you're going to lose out on. Yeah. But you can go with, like I was saying, you can go with the standard BT50 and take roughly 20,000. So don't quote me on this. It's mm. roughly, they will calculate it. But that's going to take it down to 380,000 Rand for a brand new Mazda BT. Suddenly that's big value for money. Mm. Mm. As soon as you take 20,000 Rand off it and you don't go with the 35,000 Rand's accessories, then... What do we know about Mazda? Three-year unlimited kilometer oh, warranty wow. and three-year service plan thrown in to boot. How many kilometers can you do in three years? Be well, surprised. I'm going to be doing a lot of years. You use this as, let's say, like a rep vehicle or something of the sorts. I mean, reps do high, high mileage. Mm. This is the sort of vehicle that if you do happen to stay out in, I don't know, in Phillipsburg in the free state, and you have to constantly drive to Bloom to go and get your you know, your your groceries, you're going to put some mileage on this thing. I don't know if I'm going that far to get <laughs> groceries. I'm not saying drive from here. I'm just saying if you are in one of those remote areas. No, then you need a bucky to get your groceries. Um, so the... the, the um, uh, the car itself, uh, in terms of uh, uh, warranty and and motor plan, what um, what what other stuff does it come with? Well, there's the there's the service plan, three year service plan. Yeah. Um, there is five year anti corrosion. There's three year unlimited kilometer uh, warranty on it. It's a pretty full house. It's Mazda awesome is offering package, some yeah. of the best mm. service aftermarket packages at the moment. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you guys can... Wh- where can they get the review? It's also... It's, it's also on, it's on, on the Auto Trader site, autotrader.co.za, and uh, if you just go through the social media links as well, do remember to follow Auto Trader on social media. So mm-hmm. we're on Pinterest, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, Auto Trader SA, Facebook as well. And uh, you can get in on, on the conversation by using the hashtag, hashtag AutoCentral mm-hmm. in your tweets or, uh, you know, in your tags on, well, on, on the Facebook. Cliff Central page as Cliff well. Central page mm-hmm. as well. So please do get involved with us there. And if you want to buy one, there are almost 200 on the site. Gabriella, I want to quickly... Well, that's wonderful. I mean, on Auto Trader SA, you can go into the site. How many? Over 200. Well, there's 200 um, of the... Uh, I uh, see that number and I'll give you that. <laughs> 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 Gabriella, I want to quickly throw in a deep end before we say goodbye. What tires is on your master? Last one. Don't it's worry, you won't lose the car. <laughs> it's a 185 by 60 with a rim of 16 inch. And the make of the tire, Wayne, I hope. Won't be us. Doubt it's a parade. <laughs> no, it won't no. be. <laughs> Not can it'll can be you remember or am I throwing production. that last little curveball? No, I don't know the make of the tire. <laughs> Not to worry, I thought I'd just test you on that. <laughs> Wayne, just one quick one for the listener before we go. From a safety point of view, um, a lot of people don't really know how to look after your tire in terms of maintenance. Is tire pressure a big deal? Yes, it is. And unfortunately, I'm one of those normal Muppets that ride the motorcycle and never check it. It's something that you should check on a fairly as well. on a fairly uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. regular basis. So, you know, keep just But cars as up. well. Cars Obviously. as well. Mm. M- motorcycles, cars. 
uh, because the biggest damage you do to your tires is if you're riding with underinflated tires and you hit anything. Mm. That damages sidewalls, it damages treads. Not only that, just the heat generation. Heat is rubber's enemy. Actually, I think this is a very good I think that we'll get to this and we'll discuss tires in depth mm. in one of our upcoming episodes. So, uh, stay tuned to Auto Central for that. Around yeah. it, it's maintenance around and tires. Relevant. Tires are extremely, extremely mm. important. I cannot express it enough. I well, come I from a tire, a wheel and tire mm. background myself as well. I tell you, um, uh, just going from, sum, from, from summer into winter, the, t- the change in tire pressure is unbelievable. Yep. Um, Phenomenal. I, uh, I didn't fly one of my aeroplanes planes for a while, uh, went to the hangar to go and fly, and um, uh, the tires were half inflated, just because of the weather change. Oh my, you see, so there's a lot that we can discuss on this. Guys, we're going to have to wrap up. It was wonderful having you on the show. Thank you for coming, Wayne, from Pirelli. Thank you. Gabriella, we can't wait to see the pictures. And oh. thanks for joining us. Asia. Congrats. Uh, from my side, you can join, um, follow me on um, at SA Speed Queen. Or uh, at Auto Trader SA, or at George Mini. At Chad Lookoff. Thanks for joining us, and remember the secret to a balanced life keep moving. Auto Central, powered by Auto Trader on CliffCentral.com.